Cavalier Faithful. It is the Cavs Encapsulated crew, and it is the off-season edition of Cavs Encapsulated. We're talking draft. We're really going to try to keep it to pick number 14. I'm sure there's going to be some different opinions, especially starting with me, if we should even draft at that position, which is definitely on the table. Before we get into this one, we have officially sponsored with BetUS. Go down in the link in the description. Go through that link. Sign up to gamble on their website. All you have to do is make a deposit and use our link. Use promo code JOIN125. We get a little kickback. We appreciate you guys helping us out. And you guys get ready in about six months january 1st 2023 sports gambling goes officially legal in the state of ohio so make sure you do that justin let's talk needs let's talk whoever you want to talk about if we butcher names help us out in the comments but how's it going yeah it's going i mean this is uh you know the draft is always such a fun thing to kind of speculate on it's hard with the nba draft because after you get out of the lottery or out of the lottery, out of the top five, um, it's really like it's kind of nice crapshoot. not being in the top five. Yes and no. <laughs> yes um, and no. I, I mean, we loved it last year, of course, um, but certainly we've had our issues with picks in the top five before. Um, you never know. You just never know with these guys. And picking at fourteen, best player available is a it's a thing. But you know, you're not going to draft another guard. Hopefully. Um, unless it's a shooting guard that can shoot the ball, shoot the light out of three ball. And uh, as of right now, I think we're all in agreement that we need a three and D wing. For me, I don't know. It's hard to get into it because obviously we're so early on into the process and there's a lot of names. There's a lot of guesswork going on with who might be there, who might not be there. I When it came to the draft last year, I kind of – sat down in the last two weeks before the draft happened. And, you know, we talked about Moe. We talked about, um, oh, God, the Jalen Greens. Jalen Greens. Yep. Um, last year's draft was easy because Jaylen, the Rockets just picked Jalen Green, so it was easy for us. But 14, it's a lot more difficult. Yeah, and so whoever's there is there. And I'm sure the Cavs will try to find someone. But at the same time, like, Maybe they find a package deal that works better, which I know you and Logan really want to talk about. So hopefully you have some ideas there about what we might do. Listen, I'm all for depth, but I think we have a lot of depth. But is everybody going to work? Is it a lot of okay pieces? I think trading the pick gives you the option of trading the pick and maybe one or two of your bench pieces to get a more quality bench piece. I think we need guys who are going to be fixtures. I think last year, J.B. Bickerstaff realized he had a bunch of guys at his disposal. But that can be a bad thing, and especially when you have a lot of guys. They're all solid players. We're big fans of every Cavalier that steps on the floor, of course. But I think we need a true like sixth man or a true – like Kevin Love was that, yes, and he, he could be that again. But I'm talking about a guy that can create his own shot off, off the bench. You know, something like that or a more quality starter. I just think that having 14 versus having like a top five pick or if you trade it, you're expecting to get like a stud. I think if you go at 14 and maybe a, a guy or two, you might get a filler plus um, a person that could really be you know helpful to your roster. I think it solves a headache, one with rotations and two just makes you a more full team rather than just a deep team, if that makes sense. I think really one of the huge differences with – as far as covering the different pro sports leagues, which I think it's really starting to set in this year, at least for me, the NFL and the NBA can be described as totally different due to the off season structure. Think about the NFL draft, especially Justin, you know, we draft the cornerback, you know, but we already know that Troy Hill was eventually going to be gone. We already had a boatload of moves before that. We had the quarterback in place. You know, we had we were going to roll with this. We're going to roll with the tight ends. We get we got rid of Hooper. A bulk of your offseason in the NFL, kind of due to scheduling because the Super Bowl's in February, is before the draft. A bulk of the NBA offseason is after the draft because well, the finals go till mid July any or mid June anyway because the playoffs take for literally forever. But it's like I feel like the context is really missing when it comes to our pick at fourteen because it's nice to say all right, draft Malachi Bronham at fourteen. Don't think about it, but it's like 
Windler is a question mark. You have to deal with Colin Sexton on the RFA. Do you want to give Darius Garland the max this offseason, or do you want to wait in offseason? Kevin Love's on your books for $28 million. Does Lowry really fit at, with the three big lineup with the three seven footers? Do you want to run that back again? And if you draft a Bronham, if you draft a, a two or a three with Karis Levert, how does this affect Isaac Okoro's playing time and his development? It only is going to negatively affect it if it's somebody who they really, you know, convict. There's a lot of conviction saying, oh, he's going to come in and play day one, which is the potential at 14. The history is a little bit murky as far as the last five draft picks at that position. I believe you got like Romeo Langford in there one year, and then Bam Adebayo was 14th overall. So, you know, you never really know. But there's a lot of context missing. How is the rest of the roster going to shake out? What are you doing with Chetty Osmond, you know, the rest of the uh, offseason? forget about Chetty. <laughs> that's the whole point. Like, Logan, that's what you're saying. You know, JB is in the blender in two playing games because the roster shrinks to, like, seven guys, basically. Yes. And nobody else yes. gets looked at. And the whole regular season, it's like, oh, it's all nice and free-flowing because you don't want to overcrowd people's minutes. You know, you might be able to get to nine, ten guys on your bench yeah. if you have contributors like Lamar Stevens, like Chetty Osmond, you know, people like that. But that just isn't going to cut it in the playing games. That's such a good point. I was thinking that the whole way through you were explaining that, like, keeping that 14 pick is, like, such a dreadful thing because mm -hmm. everyone in their mother, as of right now, wants to keep Colin Sexton on this team. And, you know, if you keep pick 14, well, let's just go down the starting lineup from yep. what we ended it with last year, which was Garland, Karras, Laurie, Mobley, Allen. Okay, now you have – Sexton, Okoro, Kevin Love, Rondo, and I'm saying Rondo because, well, uh, he's probably not here, right? No. He's a free agent. So. We got Lamar right. Stevens. So re just replace just replace Sexton with uh, Rondo, Chetty, and that's that's nine guys right there that, like, that's great to have during the regular season, but when it comes to, like, actually touching – and the guy at 14 – so there's 10 guys for you right now. Mm -hmm. Is that guy at 14 going to crack the top eight? Is he going to? And if you want to bring someone? Rubio, if you really want to bring Rubio back. Right. It's so hard to like even think about like wanting to draft one of these guys without moving one of the guys that we listed outside of Garland, Mobley, and Allen. Like you got at, at some point you got to think about like packaging dudes just because you know, we saw what happened towards the end of the season where we just started to play a limited amount of guys and you need to have who fits well in the court. And mm -hmm. we're kind of we're kind of getting a little bit away from like talking about draft prospects and like what we would prefer to get right now. And would it even like make sense for one of these guys to come in and get significant playing time right away at 14? I feel like people would bash us a little bit if, you know, we said, no, there's no chance. Obviously, a guy like Chetty is probably – this season on the outside looking in um, Kevin Love will still always have a role. We don't know about um, Colin Sexton. Isaac Okoro is there for defensive purposes. So he doesn't really need to touch the ball that much, which is probably a good thing for him. But, you know, I just eliminated two players, but that still puts us at seven. That would make whoever 14 is number eight. So it's tough to, it's tough to really get into that, but like, you know, we got to do it. And, I don't know if you guys have anyone that you prefer, if you know anyone outside of, you know, the guy from OSU, the guy from Kansas. I mean, it's it's really a guesswork at this point. Uh, I'll keep it a buck. I'm an NBA fan, not a college basketball fan. Right, so. um, you know, I'll, I'll follow March Madness. I'll follow certain players. If I know who the top five picks are going to be, I'm interested in those top five players. But when you get to the middle rounds, it, it truly is just a kind of a throw a dart aboard and see what lands. Mm -hmm. Um this scares the hell out of me. Um, I think Kobe Altman has really, you know, he's changed my opinion about him over the last year. Obviously it helps when you're winning basketball games, but it's easy to get a top eight, top five pick, right? That 14, you could just be wasting it when, when you could have made a move with it and let it be somebody else's problem. Um, you know, if it was Andrew Barry drafting for the Cavaliers, I think we'd find value at 14. I don't think we're, I think this draft is very top heavy. And I feel like we say that about NBA, every NBA draft, but this one especially, there's three, maybe four guys. And then you're going to, of course, have your dribblers later you know, in the in the rounds. But at 14, that one's really tough to predict. Like Kevin Porter Jr., when we got him at, was it 30, right? Was that what yeah. it was? That was like one of those picks where it's like, oh, he's still just on the board and he just has some head case issues. 
let's get him. It's just talent that you're drafting. But the problem is, I feel like at 14 and with the way this team is constructed, you can't just grab talent. You know, you have to grab the team need. When you're a good basketball team or you're starting to become a good basketball team, you need to find the needs, not the talent, because you already have the talent. Now you need to find what's going to make it all come together. 14 is not really a great spot to pick that. I'll say the same thing Logan said. I do not follow college basketball at all. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, I think I was screaming – like at the top of my lungs last year when the draft was happening, we had already made our pick with Mobley um, and the draft continues to go on. And I think around pick like 15 to pick like 20, I start going, Hey, I know this guy, Cam Thomas from LSU. I read a lot about him. I researched a lot about him, but I didn't watch a single, like, you know, outside of his highlight tape. I didn't watch him at all play right. basketball in college, but I did like work on him because what I knew of what we needed at the time, which was a, like a pure score, like a pure three-point threat. He was a very good three-point shooter at LSU. I was like, man, he's falling backwards, and we just got rid of KPJ. We kind of don't know what we're getting with Okoro, and Sexton doesn't shoot the three ball very well. What are we going to do? We should just go out and get this kid. And then, of all things, he ends up with the Nets. And, like, he's just wasting – he's going to waste away on the Nets as of right now if that team stays the way they are. And it's like, hey, I might as well, like, I would trade. Um, this is probably going to sound stupid to people. i trade that pick for that kid right now just mm-hmm. because I, I saw his work in um, – He looked I good. I New Jersey for some reason. In Brooklyn. And it, it was solid. It's very good. And it's not quite what we need. We need a three and D wing. But I think, you know, in terms of – shooting the three ball he would be a great addition so exactly what i said i said a guy who can make his own shot off the bench yeah. I, I think yep. at value wise at 14 if you got a guy like cam thomas i mean that that's perfect but why would brooklyn say yes right that's what it comes mm. down to and that's just what people you have to understand too about the nba it's like when especially like bleacher report whatever even if it's us if we propose mock trades it's gonna sound like a lot of assets because it has to be to work with the salary cap primarily and just with rosters so if we propose you know three players who were st- like were starters like let's just say it's a trade with sexton lowry and then somebody else or it's 14 for a levine a beal a donovan mitchell whoever you want to, whoever your favorite little target is in the off season it's going to sound like a lot but it's like other teams are looking to rebuild and they want promise for what they could get for maybe an asset that they don't think they could use anymore. So it's like, yeah, you're only playing seven guys. So, you know, you can't trade. You can't trade. If you're looking to win now, you can't trade for three guys. If you already have six, seven guys on the roster, you know, it doesn't really work like that. And what I think is a, what people just don't want to admit. And I I'll listen to some arguments as far as, you know, players like Lamar Stevens and Dean Wade, God, that's, we, did we even talk? Have we talked about Lamar Stevens at all before but, the show? But we Before forgot, completely forgotten. We forgot completely Dwayne. Forgotten. We forgot Dean Wade was hurt. So it's like Dean. There's Wade, eleven or twelve guys, dude, on a roster. But uh, is Moses the, Brown still signed? Season. That's good Moses for the Brown. Season. I mean, if you want to pick up, if you want to use fourteen for a backup five, I mean, I don't, I don't really have a comment on that yeah. because I know they got take it. I mean, I don't care, but it's like we could have had Trez Harrell at the break last year, whatever. But. It's one thing to draft middle of the first round or end of the first round if you have a track record and a history of elite to even great player development. The Cavs just don't. Dylan Windler was a first-round pick, and just with how rosters work out in the NBA – and just his who he is, he he played in the G League most of this year. So it's like that's a first rounder. If a first rounder in the NFL is on the practice squad, you're getting fired as a GM. You're getting fired, and they're different sports, whatever. But it's like Miami, okay, Bam at fourteen. You could say, oh, we we could get a Bam at a bio. But how much did Spolstra and Riley put put that work into Bam becoming Bam? You know what I'm saying? Same way with like a Jordan Poole. The Warriors are historically known the past decade to be good player development. Meanwhile, we have Dylan. Windler and you know we have needed elite first overall picks to be a relevant franchise LeBron James obviously was a no-brainer and then we took a chance on Kyrie Irving who was injury prone but we knew he had the elite talent we couldn't even maximize Tristan Thompson as far as him being wasn't he top five wasn't oh, he, he four? four yeah so Deion I mean, waiters for exactly I mean we could find the elite talent know. at the top but it's like let who says that at 14 Bickerstaff 
and company and Luke Walton and Altman are going to develop them into somebody who's going to be useful for us. Luke Walton, we haven't even touched on that yet. I mean, I don't want, I don't know what there's to touch on. He's just going to be the scapegoat. I like it. He's just going to blame JB. He's going to be like, JB told me to run that play. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's just, it's quite the scenario. Like I said, you can't go for talent. You have to go for fit. And you also need to find a way to shrink this roster into your true reliable. I mean, all the best teams in the NBA. And we saw it back in our championship years. You know, we knew exactly who was coming off the bench at what time. Nowadays, it's like it could be Lamar Stevens, it could be Kevin Love. You know, well, that's could, just J- some inexperience from JB. Yeah, like, he, he yeah. Has, he'll grow. He's got a lot of a lot of guys, but let's make it easier on him and not add another one. Exactly. If you're going to add another one, you know, what, what's the addition by subtraction? What, what's it called? Is that, that is that the right phrase, yes. guys? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I want to add by subtracting, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> like, but I that's the thing, though. It's go. like if Altman drafts somebody at 14, and in him and Okoro are. Let's just say it's Malachi Brownham at 14 and him and Okoro splitting minutes. Like, what is Kobe going to say? Like, oh, mm-hmm. they're both of their developments are stunted. Like, no, duh. Like, that's kind of that's what you that's the bargain you signed up for. But it's like we could come on here and talk our faces, you know, blue in the face until we, about fit. We know we need a three. We need a, a sizable wing who could shoot. That's real. Like we can sit here and talk about the three pointer, three and D all day long. We think that's boring. So we want to come give our thoughts, some internal discussion as far as how we bounce ideas off each other, you know? Mm hmm. Package it all for Donovan Mitchell. There we go. See, Justice, Justice on board with Mitchell. I think right now Levine would probably be my highest target, but it's like price tag. Can you get Kevin Love off the books? The whole season, oh, the whole, the whole off season is, mm. is kind of interesting. Paul yeah. George. It's, it's, it's really like, I don't know. It's tough for us to like get into it right now, especially just like because I, I'm looking. The Heat just got bounced out of the finals or the conference finals mm-hmm. a week ago, and already the rumor of Donovan Mitchell going to Miami is like that's like enough. That's a move that makes sense for them because hey, even though Tyler Harrow is a great player, uh, and they're potentially going to give them a couple of first round picks like they're willing to and they'll probably have to throw in another player or something but you know those are the kind of moves that are like championship winning moves and those are what are going to put you over the top picking at 14 in my mind does not put you over the top we are nowhere like near getting to the conference finals in my mind after watching last season in terms of how we ended it and obviously yes injuries happen but you know as it stands right now your top three guys are fantastic, and then everyone else is very like spotty, is super spotty, and you got to do something about those guys being spotty and having their good moments and trying to maximize the value that they've had with that. Obviously, it's hard to do that with a Colin Sexton. Obviously, he's a restricted free agent, and uh, who knows if he's going to sign back with us or if he goes somewhere else. Karis LeVert, maybe you know if he plays well this offer this upcoming season and we can get him traded by the deadline and package him for a team or for a player that's on a team that's struggling or whatnot you know it's just all up in the air and that pick 14 is just it's so much worse than having pick number three i'm sorry (laughs) yeah yeah obviously just we'll get into the developments you got you're gonna know who the top five to ten teams are gonna take basically up until draft night we're gonna be with you guys you know when it comes closer to that we're gonna have more Hard opinions, I would like to call them instead of just, you know, float or talk. But I agree. I mean, as 14, he's not going – it's unlikely that that's going to be the move that gets you over the top compared to if you could get an established veteran or established, you know, not young guy but not a veteran who quite yet who's kind of in that middle range who you know is a certified bucket who could score the basketball. But that's just how the NBA is. Justin, you bring up a good point. A lot of the NBA is pre-trade deadline too. That's not how it is in – in the NFL at all, you know, your off season's your off season. And then you're basically set, you know, you could make some free agent pickups or whatever, as far as the NFL season goes, but a lot of movement does happen right before the trade deadline in the NBA. So it's kind of, it's a marathon, not a sprint for the front office. Let us know down below, comment, hit the thumbs up button, hit subscribe. If you haven't already, who do you want at 14? Should we take a draft? Should we take a player there? Should we trade it? Who's your favorite off season target? As far as just big splash moves, maybe some role player pieces. Do you want Rubio back? What's a good number for Colin Sexton? Don't say they're 25 to 30 million because you're lying. Um, Yeah, but as far as I'm concerned, that's going to be it for Cavs Encapsulated off-season episode, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.